Hey guys, how's it going? If you're new here, every month, at the end of the month, I review my favorite book that I read. I'm gonna leave the playlist up at the top there, then you can watch the other ones that I've done so far. But today's video is going to be all about Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Unfortunately, I don't have a physical book to hold up like I usually do because I borrowed the ebook from my library on this one. But I will definitely be buying the physical book because I just, I need to own it. I need to look at it all the time. I freaking loved this book. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why. Also, side note, I am getting over a cold just like I think everybody else in the universe at this point. <coughs> so I'm starting to lose my voice. Really sorry, but I think I have enough of it to make it through the end of this video. So I rated this book a 10 out of 10. I absolutely loved it. Honestly, I didn't want to read it at first because I just heard so much hype about it that I figured, you know, my hopes were probably going to be up too high and I'd probably be disappointed. But no, still a 10 out of 10. If you haven't heard of it, there's this magical, mystical city called Weep. That's not actually the city's name, but nobody knows what the real name is because the city's real name just vanished one day. Vanished from written text, vanished from people's minds, just gone. At this point in time, most people kind of think that the city was just a legend anyways because no outsiders had ever been there and there's just something fishy. So a lot of people kind of just think it never existed. It's just a myth, except for someone named Laszlo Strange. And he's pretty much a nobody. He was an orphan. He grew up with the monks. And one day he showed up at the library and now he's a librarian. But one day warriors from the lost city show up and Laszlo realizes this is his chance to follow his life's passion, solve the mystery of the lost city and find out what the heck happened. Now, I really don't wanna give any more details than that because the way that the story really unfolded and just the way that the details were given to us was really well done. And I kind of like that I had no idea what exactly happened going into it. You do find out fairly early in the book, but still like that mystery and that just magical feeling was really, really good to me. So I don't want to ruin that for anyone else. I loved this concept. I thought it was really, really interesting. I thought the mystery was really fascinating because we're given so little information and so much of it is based on magic. So by the starting of the book, you don't really know what's possible in this magic system. So the mystery really could be anything. It could be, you know, a sinkhole or a tornado, or it could be aliens or somebody snapped their fingers. Like it could literally be anything because you don't know the scope of the magic system. So I thought that was really interesting because I was really intrigued every single time we get a little bit of information. And I thought that like the pace that we were giving clues and hints and information was really like well spaced out. So it was enough that it didn't feel like at any point info dumpy and never felt like it was moving too fast, but it was never like, okay, we're not really making progress here. Like just the pacing of the mystery was really, really well done. And it definitely kept my attention. Now I would like to mention there is a secondary perspective, I guess. I wanna call it a subplot, but it's too big to be a subplot, I think. There's something else going on and a different little path we're also following at the same time. And I don't wanna get into that because that kind of does reveal something about the mystery, so. You'll, you'll learn when you get there. Honestly, I found it just as strong as the main plot. I thought that the characters involved in that storyline were just as, I don't know, developed. They were just as dynamic. They were just as like, I just, I really cared about all of them. And I just wanted to follow everybody and see what everybody was doing and learn about everybody, even random side characters. Like everybody got a little bit of something and it was just, I really, really liked it. As far as the rest of the plot goes, the climax was big and dynamic and just like, uh, great. It was exactly what I like in a climax. Like it was just a big poof, wow moment and so well executed. And the ending was really, really well done. One thing I have to note about the ending though, major cliffhanger. Like probably one of the worst slash best cliffhangers I've ever read. It was just so like, <sighs> like, you know, when you get to those moments and it's just like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Bam, story's over. So I recommend definitely have the second book on hand. After you read a little bit of this book, if you're enjoying it, buy the sequel or place a hold at the library, whatever you gotta do, because you're gonna wanna jump straight into the sequel after reading this. 
I had to wait about a day and a half and it was torture. <laughs> and side note, the sequel was also 10 out of 10, so definitely worth it. But it was just a very abrupt and intense cliffhanger. Moving on to characters, I loved them. I don't even know how to explain how much I loved them. I loved so many characters and I loved to hate so many others. There really weren't any characters that I was like bored or annoyed with. Like obviously there was really minor characters that they just like mention them and they're really not important. But everybody that's at least mildly important is interesting in some way. The characters I loved, I was fully in love with, and the characters I hated, I really hated. And there was such a good variety of characters. Like, some of them were so funny, some of them were tough and serious, some of them were cold and reserved, some of them were kind and loving. Like, there was a really good mix, so it wasn't like... I don't know, you know how sometimes there's too many funny characters and it's just kind of like, okay, that's enough now. It wasn't like that at all. It was so perfectly well-rounded and I just, I really wanted to root for everybody. I wanted to root for the ones that I liked and I wanted to root for the ones that I hated to get what they deserve. Every single main character had such a great character arc and like was really well developed and changed by the end of it. Even some characters that I really didn't expect to get a full arc with like, I don't know, they grew and changed and they had their own little moments to shine and it all felt very natural. Some of the changes were smaller than others, but it was setting up for bigger changes in the sequel, and it's you could still tell that they changed, but you could tell that they weren't at their final stage yet. But definitely still enough for it to be satisfying. I think one of the things that I loved most about the characters was the dialogue, the banter, the arguments, the playfulness of some of it. It was just such great dialogue, and like, I don't know how to explain this in the right way. There was also like unnecessary lines of dialogue because I don't mean that at all in a bad way. I really think it was just perfectly executed. And I think that goes to this, the amazing writing style that Lainey Taylor has. But you know how they always tell you when you're writing, if it's not necessary, cut it out. If it doesn't, you know, show you something, teach you something, move something along. It doesn't deserve to be in your novel. This had so many like other little things thrown in there that Reading it like as a writer and like with that kind of slightly more critical eye, I would recognize like, okay, that line was completely pointless, but it felt genuine. Like when you're having a conversation with someone, not everything you say is important, especially if you're me, I ramble like crazy. So it had a lot of just like little throw-ins there that really weren't necessary to plot, really weren't big or important but just made the conversations feel like, like a real person you would just talk to on the streets. So I really, really liked that. I thought it was so well executed. I'm gonna read part of our conversation. It doesn't have any spoilers in it, so don't worry about that. But it just, the humor of some of these characters, I just absolutely adored. Side note, I doubt I'm pronouncing all these things right. Drave scoffed, doesn't involve destruction. That's like me asking you not to be a mealy-mouthed poltroon. Laszlo's eyebrow shut up. Paltroon? Look it up, snapped Drave. Laszlo turned to Ruza. Do you think I'm a paltroon? He asked, the way a young girl might ask whether her dress was unflattering. I don't know what that is. I think it's a kind of mushroom, said Laszlo, who knew very well what paltroon meant. Really, he was surprised that Drave did. You are absolutely a mushroom, said Ruza. It means coward, said Drave. Oh, Laszlo turned to Ruza. Do you think I'm a coward? Ruza considered the matter. More of a mushroom, he decided. <laughs> like, just so funny. Like, it's just such fun, like, witty little banter. One more thing about the characters that I loved. I actually loved the romantic subplot. I'm not gonna give anything away or say who it's between or anything like that, but I don't know, I've mentioned this a lot of times that I'm just not really big into romance. I just don't really care much about romance. I'm not a romantic person. But with this one, like, I just loved both the characters and all the characters so much that I was just really, really, like, rooting for them. And every time that they, you know, got a little closer, I just felt so happy for them. And any time that they got a little bit apart, I felt so sad. And it was just so well done. And I just had so many feelings. And I just, I loved them. And I shipped them so hard. And I just genuinely really wanted them to be together and be happy so yeah 
from me, that's saying a lot. I want to talk about the world building a little bit before I get into the writing in general. I just thought it was so cool that not only did Lainey Taylor create this fantasy world and this magic system and everything, you know, the typical fantasy world building, but she created this entire mythology that went around with it and all of these legends and stories and even like Laszlo's in the library a lot so he's reading and he reads a lot of like old legends and mythology and sometimes he'll just like reference some of them and I don't know I just I feel like Lainey Taylor probably has all of those all planned out too and you just get like this tiny little line of oh and then there was the person who did this one thing and like I don't know just the way that the world building is created is just so well done so realistic you know how sometimes when you're reading you can tell that the writer knows what they're talking about it really felt like that like as i was reading it and like just kind of getting glimpses of this world and like seeing it come alive in front of me you could tell that laney taylor knew everything about this world and like it was so like real in our head and just such a giant thing and she was feeding us the information that we needed and it just felt so so great the world was complex but not at all confusing just really like large scale and huge but we never got too much so it never felt overwhelming at all and i think that has a lot to do with just like how great of a writer lanny taylor is which brings me to possibly my favorite thing about this book and that is the writing style it is beautiful like it just really feels like every single word was like very carefully picked and like every sentence has this like beautiful melody to it and like it just seems like there was so much thought and care put into the writing itself like it felt like the writing got just as much attention as the story itself and you really don't see that very often a lot of times you have really flowery words and all this beautiful language that means diddly squat or sometimes you have this really great story and the writing is just you know okay but this one was like 10 out of 10 on all fronts just the the flow and the word choice and just everything about it was honestly beautiful i honestly can't say enough good things about this i really don't think there was anything that i would change or improve not that i could but you know what i mean like I would honestly give this 10 out of 10s in every category that I can think of. The only mild, mild thing that I was slightly unhappy about was that the ending was such a cliffhanger, and that's just because I didn't already have the sequel. But it was like, it left you the good kind of frustrated. Like, it wasn't like, oh man, like the author stopped writing now, like what's up with that? It's like, why did you do that? I have so many questions. I'm so excited to read the second book. Like, it was really, really well done, but that's honestly the only even slightly criticism and it honestly isn't a criticism at all. I would highly highly recommend this book. I'm definitely going to be checking out other books by Lainey Taylor because I am in love with her writing style and I just want to see what other things she's created and what else her beautiful mind has come up with. So that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please click the like button so I know and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday usually reading or writing related and for the month of April every Wednesday I'm going to be doing a video about Camp NaNoWriMo probably a writing vlog but that's going to be coming up as well so stay tuned for that. If you've read this book feel free to comment down below. If you want to talk to me about it or get into spoilers, feel free to reach out on Twitter. My Twitter is linked below and I'll put it right here. But I just, oh, I loved it so much. Again, thank you for watching. I hope I see you guys next time and until then, have a great day. Bye!